Day 242, a ladder worth climbing. Hey, we're, we're not that poor anymore. Kind of poor, but not that poor. It's a lazy Sunday afternoon in summer, with you and Sam making the most of both kids being out of the house. You head into the pantry, taking a moment to remember when it used to be your mother's room. Before coming out with the last two slices of homemade cake. Oh no. It's rare for you and Sam to actually get to finish sweet things in the house, and you savor every mouthful. Just as you take your last bite, you hear the sound of the front door slamming. That'll be Charlie back from the go-getters. Uh, last time, my daughter bought a lighter for Charlie. I hope he's not smoking. You can hear him practically running to come find you, and he's grinning from ear to ear when he finally does. I have some really big news! You and Sam play along, sitting attentively with bated breath. Ready? Charlie asks, as you both nod enthusiastically. With a flourish, he reveals a new badge from his pocket and proudly presents it to you, both to exam, as he announces. As of today, I'm a member of the first tier of Cohesion Cadets! There's way more stuff I'm gonna be doing and I'll be working some weekends, but it's really cool. Yeah, do you get paid? Do you want to help out around the house, help out with the, the, the bills and all that? <laughs> it is worrying. Sam congratulates Charlie as you can't help but frown. This seems like a big step up for teenagers. Cohesion cadets. Working weekends? Hmm. Advance is good at making stuff sound good. But act actually. Day 278. A sign of things to come. Shopping. Something that always seemed so tedious before the sanctions has become even more of a chore now. You managed to get almost everything you needed for the family this week evening, but you'll have to come back tomorrow to get through the week. There's a queue to leave the car park, though it's hard to make out why in the dark. Hopefully, whatever's causing it won't be long. Oh no, oh no, some sort of a road sanction? Or check? As the final car in front of you drives off, you realize the queue is actually due to a checkpoint set up at the exit. A friendly looking man in an advanced uniform, CCO emblazoned in a number of places on it, approaches your car and knocks on the driver's side window. You roll it down. Uh, I hope CCO stands for Cohesion Cadet Officer. Good evening. Nothing to worry about. I was just wondering if I could see your team membership card, please? Weren't these cards supposed to be voluntary? I'm sorry, I don't have one. Ah, that's not a problem. We've got forms with us right here, and we're more than happy to sign you up. The man gestures to his colleague behind him, a young woman in a similar uniform. She clearly received the short end of the stick and is stuck with the paperwork. Yeah, it's voluntary, if you all do it. We'll push back a little bit. I thought these cards weren't required? Well, strictly speaking, they're not. But there's also loads of benefits to having them, and there's no reason to not get one. His smile fades a bit. And when he puts up a hand to scratch the back of his neck for a moment, he leans over you, his presence now seeming a little intimidating. Am I gonna be a pushover? Benefits? Loss of privacy. Ooh. Am I gonna be a pushover? Am I... You know what? Advance has done nothing for me so far. I, I think we should push back a little bit, okay? Like, this is... I'm evil. But I, I need to feed my family and... Ooh, I don't know. Oh. <sighs> no thanks. It's not something I want right now. Almost instantly, the friendly demeanor is gone and his expression is one of stern disapproval. Well, obviously, I can't make you sign up, but I would strongly recommend you do, and soon. We wouldn't want people to think you had anything to hide, would we? He takes a step back and gestures for you to drive on. You're sure you see him writing something down in your rearview mirror as you head home somewhat more hurriedly than before. Clearly, Advance are very keen on everyone joining the team. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be, uh, maybe I used to be very pro-advanced. I was very hopeful for them. But seeing how things have been developing, me being forced to uh, put my mom in the transition center, my son coming home and seeming like a different person, maybe I'm uh, having a second, a change of mind. Day 290. An invitation worth ignoring? It's a Saturday, one of your few days off, and you've made the most of it. But as late afternoon draws on, the invitation sits pinned to the fridge, staring accusingly at you. The Channel One Gala is a mandatory work event, Bozeman was very quick to tell you. Also, don't you dare be late. Oh, okay, some random guy on the streets versus my direct boss? That's a little bit different, right? Uh, I, I want- oh... <laughs> I'm really sad about me and Sam, though, but... We get overtime pay? It's probably not wise of Riz Bozeman's wrath. Better go. Best start getting ready. You wonder if Sam will give you a lift? A drink or two might help with the enforced office socializing. Hopefully it won't be too bad. After all, you're pretty good at your job. Right? National News Night You arrive on time, barely at the Sylvanian, one of the oldest and grandest hotels in the capital. You're surprised to see a queue to get in, and quickly realize it's because people are being searched at the door by some very military-looking personnel in smart attire. While you're waiting, you can't help but notice just how very opulent the building is, possibly the fanciest place you've been to in your life. You submit to being patted down and, with a sigh of relief, are led into the hotel. What are they looking for? Not the membership card, at least. Once inside, you're directed to the Grand Ballroom, and following the signs, you marvel at the sheer scale of the place and the amount of armed security guards. When you finally arrive, a very severe-looking woman at the door asks for your name. I'm Alex Winston. She curtly checks her list before whispering something to the waiter beside her. Uh-oh. <laughs> You've made it just in time to be seated before dinner. Please, follow a manual here, to your table. The waiter smiles at you and opens one of the great double doors, gesturing for you to enter. Immediately, you can see why it's called the Grand Ballroom. You'd pause for a second to take it all in. You feel a slight tap on your arm, and Emmanuel gestures for you to follow him. He seats you at a table in the central floor area, with a decent view of the stage. Clearly, you're in Bozeman's good books at the moment. You're sat with some colleagues you've seen around the Channel 1 offices before, but don't know that well. One of them informs you, far too excitedly, it's a very corporate evening of awards and speeches. Mm, at least the food should be good. Okay, at least I'm, I'm a suck-up, but can I get more money for my family and stuff? I need actual benefits to come with these, this sucking up, okay? Dinner is indeed lovely, and with the help of the no doubt very expensive wine, conversation flows easily enough. In fact, much to your surprise, you're actually presented with an award for best newcomer to the Channel One family. Well, this was unexpected. As you walk up to collect it, you recognize the presenter as Dr. Adrian Atkinson Blimey, of Incisors fame. He thanks Advance for sponsoring this year's gala, before specifically thanking Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement for being in attendance tonight. As you take to the stage, you see the frontmost central table does indeed seat the Prime Ministers, as well as Bozeman, Megan, and some other very well-to-do types that you don't recognize. See, Jeremy's not here. As Megan is a suck-up, she's going up, Jeremy's not a suck-up, he's going down. That explains all the security. As you're handed the award, Dr. Atkinson Blimey asks if you'd like to say a few words. Uh... Quick praise? Uh, just no, let's play it cool. You make a joke, thanking Dave for fleeing the country and leaving you his job. Fleeing the country? Is that what Dave did? He doesn't want to be under Advance's rule. Hmm. Are people going to be happy about me bringing this up, though? I'm a little bit worried. Uh-oh, uh-oh, okay. 
Most of the room breaks out into polite laughter. But you see that neither of the Prime Ministers cracks so much as a smile. And nor does Bozeman. He's too busy, frantically flipping between examining Peter and Julia for a reaction and glaring daggers at you. Eventually, they join in the light applause as Adrian ushers you back to your seat. Uh-oh, 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 in front of the Prime Ministers too! That may not have been the smartest move. Yeah, that's the name of the game today. Just as you're finishing up dinner, one of the other people at your table points behind you. As you turn, you see Bozeman walking briskly past, with Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement in tow, you're pretty sure he was pointedly ignoring you. He seems to be introducing the Prime Ministers to a selection of people at different tables. Better them than you. Mmm, I mean this looks like a bad thing at the party, but we might not necessarily want to be too much on one side anyway. It might mean that we'll get, uh, oh man, if we had gotten the recommendation, maybe we would be doing better, but... It's okay, it's okay. Like, I, I have morals too, I have some morals somewhere. If one joke is enough to drive them away, then whatever. You finish off the rest of the meal, listen to the last few speeches, and then head home. All in all, it was a surprisingly nice evening. You might actually look forward to the next one. Providing Bozeman invites you to that one, of course. I didn't want to be a super suck-up. Oh, but I, I should have been because that's what I've been doing up until now, right? Ah, <sighs> maybe I should have. Jeff the Plume? I thought, I thought it was Jeff Algebra. Damn it, maybe I missed my boat on becoming rich there. Day 296, the heat wave. Oh, it's hot today. It's really hot. Whoa. God, oh my god. Classical illusions are no substitute for air conditioning. You know, I genuinely it's really hot. Mood today. She's not even here. Yes, but he is. I don't even have a phone. Handler. Who, Andy? I don't know what the fuck his name is, do I? He's here to keep us safe when people like this rock. Why? He was nine. I hate guns. I gotta do those tapes. Ten seconds, everybody. So, we've got any actual real news tonight? Well, the world's on fire. Is that good enough for you? Going in five. Advance? Four, three. Okay. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Siege of eternity. The World Council today established a military blockade to enforce the unjust and punitive sanctions now entering the They're the same. Week. In a statement from Team Headquarters a short time ago, Prime Minister Julia Salisbury issued a commanding response to this unprovoked escalation. The World Council should make no mistake. This blockade and the temperature? sanctions it seeks to enforce are an act of war and will be treated as such. War! Any incursion, however slight, into our territory will be met with swift and deadly force. You have been warned. You have been warned. War! Top beer. As his new line of ales goes from strength to strength, Johnny Hansleeves seems to we can't be really even feed capitalizing the on his success. The former footballer turned entrepreneur seems to be as comfortable <laughs> in the boardroom as he ever did Rocket science. As Hebbard Ale smashes projected sales figures yet again. To expand his beer empire even further, Johnny has unveiled a high-tech new brewery to keep up with demand on his flagship ale. It says wow. to be said he will be a place where he can really let his creative juices flow, bottle those creative juices, and then sell them at a tidy profit. In it to win it, exciting news from Advance today. He looks disheveled. The of a new monthly prize draw for all team membership card holders. Every month, lucky it's making you get a card across the country will be picked at random to receive what Team HQ are describing as unique prizes worth more than money used to be. Take up on the scheme has been much higher than expected, and if this lucky winner's delighted face is anything to go by, it looks like pretty soon everyone's going to have to have one. Kiss me, Fardy. 
the nation's favorite all-rounder, the humble Flard, has risen to new heights today after a surprise announcement. The news that Flard fans all over the territory have been waiting for is finally here. In a statement oh, I feel like such a sucker. Tonight, Remington's Fist unveiled the next chapter for that faithful family favorite, the Flard. Advance have come to a deal with the manufacturing giant, reportedly for a whopping 4 million units, and have been named the territory's official Flard supplier. How neutral can we stay? Here, sealing the deal, marked the occasion by releasing 14 flowers into the sky as a symbol of peace and prosperity. <laughs> Locked up tight, with relations between Doctors Wall and Smallsborg and Horgansford deteriorating at an ever increasing pace, the plans for their high tech war were revealed today. The bitter rivalry between the two intellectuals has become an impassioned race to determine who's this is just whatever. To proceed to construction. The public's positive reaction to their plan has meant no expense will be spared in building the gratuitous barricade. Dr. David Wong has always had a tendency to over-engineer his ideas, and it seems this new design will continue the trend. With over 4,000 moving parts and consuming as much power as 14 petting zoos, his static separation device promises a high-tech and over-convoluted way to keep the groups apart. Life during wartime. As if we didn't have enough aggressors on our borders, internal problems are growing for the government as radical activist group disrupt caused chaos in Parliament. Mm. Scuffles broke out after the protests, resulting in multiple arrests and the injury of three community cohesion officers. Let's root for disrupt too. Have to comment. The that one makes them look like hooligans. This one's cool. All those who have seen these striking images. As their actions escalate, people across the country are asking themselves who are disrupt and what exactly we can build both of them up. Other than a new disrupt in advance. All this, and I'll be talking to some people with fascinating medical conditions, as well as one of the contenders in this year's feline football championship and a proud owner. That's all up on tonight's National Nightly News. Oh my god. There is a noticeably, there's a sinister tone starting up now. I don't think things are gonna be just about the fun and games anymore. Wait, which one are you? It, it flipped! Ah! Interference! But first tonight, our team of correspondents has been dispatched to every corner of the country to see how the people of this great nation of ours are coping with this unprecedented hot weather. First, let's go to Megan Wolf in Shining on Sea to see what this scientific community has to say. Megan, how's the weather there? It's absolutely glorious, Jeremy. Thank you for asking. It's very hot. I'm here with Dr. Anne Burns at the University of Brunsford. Are you enjoying the weather as much as I am? Oh, yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? My eyelids are sweating. <laughs> what is this and background? You're part of a team carrying out a study into just what's causing this unbelievable heat. Is that right? Well, yes, Jeremy's angry. Yes, we want to be able to reassure the public once and for all that there's absolutely nothing to worry about and that they can enjoy their sunstroke and fossil fuels in peace. You sound very confident. This is hotter that. than oh, normal. So I can say without any hesitation, there is really no cause for any concern here. I I've actually left my car running. <laughs> So tell us about this experiment. Ah, well, we take data from weather stations from all over the world, along with atmospheric samples, and we take all that and we feed it into this state-of-the-art computer, and very soon we'll be getting a high-tech readout of the results. He looks very pissed off. They're talking the whole time. I should just say, um, uh, none of this would be possible without the generous support of Rivington's Fist. This is all thanks to their unrivaled investment in our future, and may I just say, complimentary personal anecdotes. This oh, button is what we gotta care about. And, ha, as expected, everything is absolutely fucked. Hang on. This... This can't be right. Uh, right, but uh, obviously you said a second ago that everything is absolutely fine, so... Well, actually, under concern level, it just says, Why, God, why? We should be <laughs> celebrating these wonderful results, I think. <laughs> yeah? We need to evolve gills within 40 years. Here it just says, Shit, shit, shit. Look at you. This is meant to be a celebration. Global no, warming. Shit, 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 shit. There you go. Shit, Much shit. better. Can I just say thank you again to Sophia Remington for <laughs> providing all of this. Everyone, we don't have long. Time is running, it's running out. out. Absolutely right. That is all we have time for. Abandon hope and return to the forest. 
Oh no. Enjoy that. I'd like to thank Dr. Burns for just one opinion on the climate. The sea will reclaim us all! There you have it, Jeremy. <laughs> proof, if proof it, be need be, that everything is just fine. I'm Megan Wolf, here with science. Back to you. Megan Wolf there, attempting to do some actual news. Next, oh, 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 the Rays of Shade. Who's in Scratchford with some of the winners of this week's team membership lottery. Robin? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm here in Scratchford with Gary Failsafe, a janitor at the local school, and Amelia Jackhammer, an aspiring poet. Both of you were drawn at random from those who hold team membership cards to receive this week's amazing prize. How do you feel? Filled with fervent euphoria. <laughs> Yeah, good, yeah. And all that we had to do was oh my a God. form or two. Wow, that sounds so convenient, but... They're trying to get people to, to use the cards. That's right, Robin. I've won dinner with Julia Salisbury at one of the capital's top restaurants. Who wants Ooh, that? Swanky? And I've been invited to Peter Clement's house to help him dredge the gutter in. Who wants that? That's absolutely terrific. Oh you my must God. Both be over the moon. <laughs> I've written a poem about it. So, can you tell me about the moment when you first heard the news? These two are bigger well, suck ups than me. I was battling against a particularly difficult floater, probably one of the six swarmers, when the headmaster came and found oh, me. I was involved in a similarly brutal conflict with a particularly arduous stand. It's really hard. So, you were both polishing dirt. No, I don't like to polish them. I like to keep them intact for my collection. Oh. Oh. How unexpected. <laughs> Your turd collection? Okay. Turds. I write poetry. Potato, potato. So, Gary. Do you think Peter Clement's going to let me keep the contents of his downpipe? There's no harm in asking, I suppose. Or would you like to hear one? <laughs> no, thank you. Gary. <laughs> You signed up for team membership was it in hopes of winning the lottery talking a lot today reasons? i like a flutter of course but no the boss said i had to sign up to keep coming into school Very it's voluntary membership card but you gotta remember to you gotta do it Published book of sonnets about children. Perhaps you'd like to hear one. <laughs> no. Or an anthology no. of haikus on the death of innocence. I'd rather hear about Gary's turd collection. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might say that. Really? Well, Jeremy is. Are you all right? Yes. It's really hot. It's coming. Oh, it's coming. Oh. Mm. It's inspiration, and it's delicious. Mm. Right, you are. <laughs> Today on the show, there's no news. Just a man who keeps multiple poos. This big one's my favorite. See how it's fine. Ew! Really <laughs> Would you encourage other people to enter for their chance to win? This needs to be censored. If it's color you're looking for, take a gander at all blue eyes here. Ooh! The national news lost its way when it covered some crap on a tray. Some of these are quite rare. Maybe that was unfair. And that's all we have time for today. It all rhymed. Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Robin. What a lucky pair they are. And finally in this segment, it's over to Patrick Bannon, who's gone to the smelliest town in the country to see how the unprecedented weather is affecting the locals. Patrick? Hello there, Jeremy. Hello, yes. I'm here live in Grizzleford, which has recently voted the smelliest town in the country. And I have to say that, you know, in this heat, the smell really is. I mean, it's, 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 it's something else. Barry Lardons, mate. You've lived here your whole life. How'd you put up with the stink? Well, we're just all very proud of our achievement, to be honest with you. Is the edit going to be boring today? I'm barely switching. Do you know what it's like, son? There's nothing Being to switch. The second smelliest town. No, I don't. Living in the shadow of Arsminster. I smug fucks. But who's laughing now, eh? <laughs> hey, what? Not me, that's for sure. I said, what happened, <laughs> mate? Right, the good people from Willington Fist came in and saved the he day. He looks so unhappy. Factory. You're talking, of course, about the newly built flower factory. Yeah, they gave us this big presentation. Redoing his makeup place. every three seconds. But as soon as we heard about the stench, we paid them whatever they wanted to put it here. 
think not affect your life in every way, Barry? I mean, perhaps if you're filling in a tax return or completing the physical act of love. It's strong at first, but you get used to it after several weeks of your first bout of sickness. The judges were very impressed. So, oh, what, what, what's the sickness? Uh, oh, that's nothing to oh. worry about. It takes a few minutes before you develop any symptoms. <laughs> Now, folk are saying something about the production line and how they dump carcasses directly into the water main, but I think it's probably a few valves on the high street. On the high street? Uh, should I see a doctor? This what doesn't even... Well, the first one this place looks really run down. questions. <laughs> then folk experience a lot of inhibition. <laughs> Do they? When was the last time you brushed your teeth, you stinking old tramp? Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> right, the next recording is a period of randomly bursting into song, followed immediately by delusions of grandeur. Oh, I thought we were from a little song of my life. Hello, it's what? sexy what? Patrick Bannon, and he's wearing sexy shorts now. Oh, my God, look at me. I'm like a stallion. I'm gorgeous. Why didn't you tell me? I should take my shirt off. You know what? I'll even let you touch me if you want. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. about of undeserved self-confidence. <laughs> Love the Bannon. Feel the Bannon. Feel the Bannon. Oh, man, what's the and the on we. <laughs> now, all that's left now are the hallucinations and unconsciousness. Now, Dotty, was that you? He's hallucinating. Why are you made out of elbows? You know, I don't eat opinions. <laughs> Ew, it's in the <laughs> bathroom. Worry, folks. Uh, once he wakes up, he'll be just fine. We'll just find a place to stick him where it won't matter how many times he evacuates his bowels. Right, that's all here from Grizzleford, a town that's really making a stink. I'm Barry Lardons. Back to you, Jeremy. Thank you. With a naval blockade being set up around our coastline as we speak, when we come back, I'll be talking to three members of the general public who appear to be here purely for medical reasons. Don't go away. Unless, of course, you've got something better to do. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. Features a potentially controversial guest. Advance may request some censorship if he goes to... I want a secret. Oh no no no! I didn't need to censor that. That was the. It's getting really hectic. I can barely pay attention. Mm, it was the interference. I'm not getting that big bonus today. Yikes. We gotta keep attention on this too. This is the short version. We saw the long one already. The intensive formula acts fast, repairing damage and strengthening strands for hair that's truly unbreakable. Oh god. Rapid repair and protect, deep nourishing, intense. The heat really makes people formula. go crazy. Healthy looking great hair days that make you say, Look at my hair. Look at my hair. Acid gastric. Because you have to. Welcome back to, to the National Nightly News Welcome with me, to, your host, Jeremy Donaldson. Later, we'll be talking to the captain of the territory's first cat football oh. team, Professor Pumpkin. But first, I'm joined by three guests with some balmy bodily behaviours. Joining me is a woman who's been hiccuping for over nine months. Isn't that no. right, Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, tell us, what brought all this on? Well, it's all a bit of a blur, Jeremy, to be totally frank with you. So I was watching your show and I remember seeing the news about the election. And it, 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 it hasn't stopped since. Fascinating. I think that's actually a thing. here is Frankie Steam. Um, perhaps you could explain to us exactly what your physiological foreboil is. I'm here to say it's high time people like me were respected. We're constantly overlooked in the workplace, we're whispered about on buses, and we're asked politely to leave children's birthday parties. Are you a pedophile? Disgusting. Oh. I, uh... I'm 
sorry, my bowels have comic timing. Sorry, and finally, I'm joined by a man who answers <laughs> every question honestly, even when it isn't aimed at him. How do you cope with that, Mr. Truman? With a combination of booze, self-hatred, <laughs> and hardcore pornography. Is that right? Not according to my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, then let's speak to Rose. Tell me, how does the hiccuping impact you? I get shushed a lot, which is hard. <laughs> hard. At work, they've asked me to, uh, to stop answering the phones. It's really affecting my confidence. Well, I find Aww. it really fucking irritating. I find it really Do people tend to believe your story? Fuck no. Actually, I've been surprised at how much support I've received. <laughs> And Frankie, um, why have you come here today? Because my wife left me and I was hoping that the fame would win her back. We've started a group for people with ailments deemed broadly comical by society. It's called Take Us Seriously. That's right. And we, we bloody well mean it. <laughs> and who's joined so far? A bunch of fucking losers. It's just us so far. And how much success have you had? Well, we've seen some real positive changes. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's been a runaway <laughs> success. Shit, you're tooting all your own horn. Single person come to our fun run, and all of our leaflets fell in the canal. Huh. Well, Miss Piercy, um, some people are saying your condition was actually caused by the shocking events of that night. What do you think? Come down, Mr. Donaldson, that's absolute rubbish. What it'd be like to have a pair of tits. <laughs> Could you? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's very hard. What was I thinking? That you're a team fuck puppet? No. Or a sellout cunt? <laughs> oh, just a reminder that he can help it. And hey, if this isn't live television, then what is it? A fuck fest of propaganda masquerading as journalism. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right, Frankie Rose, tell us, how can the viewers get involved with your cause? Yes, we're holding a, a sponsored run in um, Capital <laughs> the Park uh, next weekend. It's called the No Smiles 13 Miles. No, it's called the No Laugh no. Half. What did I say before the show? It was the team pulling Jeremy Donaldson's strings. No, I, I didn't say <laughs> Wow, we may have to end that there, unfortunately. What a harmless bit of fun. Oh, Speaking oh, oh. Of, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We demand respect. Yes, ah, yes. well, later, I'll be talking to <laughs> Professor Pumpkin. A ginger tabby with a world-class pair of penalty paws. Is that really necessary? No, it isn't. Let go. <laughs> Not you. I'll hand him at once. This people want to see. That's enough. That's enough. Oh, oh my. Whoa. What are you I'm trying not to piss myself. Alex, cut the drone. Don't you dare! Alex, cut the drone. Don't you fucking dare cut to the ads before I tell you to. Don't dare cut to the ads before I tell you You in the broadcast centre. Bozeman's lost cape coat. You listen to me. You cut to the ads before I tell you to, and I will kill every single person in this studio. I have been thinking about what I'm doing. I've been thinking about it for a long time. We all should be. Christ, it's so fucking hot in here! Do you remember when we used to do the real news? Before it was all lottery winners and bloody cat football? We are on the brink of a siege, the likes of which the world hasn't seen in hundreds of years. The enemy is at the gates, and I'm stuck here talking to these three fucking idiots. I think my hiccups have stopped. Okay, we're not gonna cut to the ass. Just keep talking. Get the fuck out of my studio. Go on, now, go, before I change my mind. Jenny, lock the doors. Lock the doors. Yes, Jeremy. Now, good. Yes. Now. Oh my God. Okay. You in the broadcast center. Alex, you listen to me. Still gotta get you the reaction shots. Now, I'm sure you've already loaded up exactly what you're gonna play in the commercial, but today's gonna be a little bit different. Look to your right. Yes, really. Look to your right. There is a VHS tape, and I want you to load it into one of the machines. And when I say so, and not before, you play it. You've got about 15 seconds, so I wouldn't waste any time. Now, all cameras. Thanks for everyone for playing that tape. This station does not negotiate with terrorists. I hope I've made myself clear. You seem to know what to do. Every single thing that comes out of this studio is either one-sided or banal. We're going to show the other side for a bit. For a bit of fucking balance. Are the good old days. Alex. B. Play the fucking tape. Now, I don't want to hurt any of you. No, it's time See, for change. I don't like, We're not going to suck up to advance. Oh, Alex, you're going to get me in trouble with that. Let's hope you're not.
Reset the system for the third segment. I imagine the ratings are going to be through the roof. You've heard them talk about us on the news. He had a gun, okay? I didn't want him to kill people. It's not about me feeding my family anymore. If those three people died because of me... You know advance the line. No. You know the elderly are not a burden. You know the rich were not... Yeah, at least I played my Illuminati one. And you know the team membership card is an ID card. No matter what they try to tell you. But why should you trust us? Another faceless organization. Jeremy has had it. Next up, we'll play the advanced team membership cards one. <laughs> yeah, we'll make everyone happy by playing all of it. Well, this is not a movie. Alan James! My name is Alan James. I used to try and shock people for a living. For entertainment. But now we live in a time where perhaps you need to be shocked. Perhaps we need to wake up. Advance are coming for our freedoms. They are coming they for are. the fruits of our labors. They will take our wealth. They will euthanize our parents and smiling throughout. They will turn our children against us if we voice our concerns. Yeah, my son. But you don't have to accept it. A great many people already won't. You can resist. You can disrupt. Find us. Talk with us. Join us. It isn't hard. We're everywhere. This wasn't what I planned. I mean, some of it was. I had speech, look. Well. But this, this was unexpected. This was unexpected. So what Saying now? Saying goodbye Jeremy? to my wages. It was supposed to be your day off. It was supposed to be your oh, day she... off. Please, uh, don't do any more stupid things today. Please, don't do any more stupid How things today. How long? How long, Jenny? How long? You're already live. Security guard. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Welcome back to the National Joining me unexpectedly, for I very much imagine will be my last broadcast, are two new guests. Jenny works here at the National Nightly News, and is someone I consider, well, a friend. And next to her is, and next to her is, what's your name? Andy. What's your name? Andy's a policeman. Only we don't call him that anymore. He's a community cohesion official. He's a community mm. cohesion official. Sorry. Oh, that's really that's what it stands for. CCO. Community cohesion officer. CCO. And how's that feel, Andy? Being rebranded? It's, uh... It's good. <laughs> it's, it's not about confrontation anymore. You know, the, the force had its fair share of problems. The, uh... The team doesn't have as many. But it still has some. Because you're forcing say. people Couldn't to agree with you. Oh, I don't know what you want me to say. Christ, you're fucking useless, aren't you? Christ, we'll come back to you later. We'll Jenny? Come back to you later. I don't Jenny. want to be on the news, Jeremy. We're still That's censoring the news. Who'd want to do this? Jenny. Why did you join the National Miami News Team? I always wanted to work in news. Yes, but why specifically this program? The National Nightly News. It was the news everyone trusted. Was? Was. Is. Do you really want to quibble semantics at gunpoint? Is there something else you'd rather discuss? Is there something else? There is a great big Alan Jane sized elephant in the room you seem to be ignoring. What do you mean? I saw your face when that hood came down. You didn't know, did you? It's about the message, not the messenger. It's like it's I said, you didn't know. Alan James no. is not the greatest guy either. I didn't know. The people I met were with, he wasn't there. <laughs> God, I didn't I'm know sorry. it was Alan James. I'm sorry. I didn't know but seriously. I'm sorry. Alan seriously. fucking James. <laughs> You're flushing your life down the toilet for... God, I love you, Jeremy, but... I love you, Jeremy. He's a good speaker. He's popular in the country. He doesn't believe him either. Can't right. Well, we don't like advance. What options do we have? Look, forget Alan James. There is still something Andy. deeply wrong. There is still something and you know it, Jenny. Wrong. And you know it, Andy. And you, know it, Jenny. And you, you at home, you know it too. And you, you at home, Meanwhile, you know it too. I'm interviewing a guest who stinks of I shit. Patrick is paddling about 
in shit. And Robin, Robin is literally interviewing someone who collects the fucking stuff. I mean, it's not sophisticated, but what a metaphor. We are sleepwalking our way into oppression. Oh no. And the news isn't saying anything. We're not saying anything. Says who? Alan fucking James. What are all those scientists working on at Grantham Downs? What are they testing underground at Altergrave? Andy, your turn. Make yourself fucking useful. How many what am I doing? I'm censoring it still. Just because they weren't carrying or didn't have team membership cards. Oh, well, there's other forms of identification that we will accept. For how long? We're just here to well. Then why do you need these? Then why do you need these? Not really help Should I censor? Should I not censor? Andy? Let me demonstrate it for you. Let me help you. Let me help you. You eat these cards of my notes on it, and you'll probably digest a fact. That'd be helpful, wouldn't it, Andy? Knowing a fact? What? I don't understand. Do you want my help, yes, Andy? Yes, yes, whatever you say, yes. Security are here, Jeremy. Eat it. What? Eat the fucking news, Andy, or I'll force it down your fucking throat. Jeremy, stop. Go on. Really? Eat it. Eat it, you fucking bully. Jeremy, stop. They will kill you. Please. Don't make me watch that. We shouldn't censor this. You're right. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, everyone. You can put the card down now, Andy. You can put the card down now. You can go now. You too, Jenny. Now. Fuck off over there. You too, Jenny. Fuck off over there. Then Jenny done. All cameras on me. All cameras on me. This new regime of ours is so this new regime of ours seductive. Is so I understand that. But before we all hand off our freedoms, should we ask to whom we're handing them over? Don't you want to know what's being done in your name? How many people were transitioned last month? I'm not censoring oh, it. Hi. Again, if you care. Again. Shouldn't someone ask advance? How they plan to deal with this blockade? How many years or months of supplies we have? Why aren't we asking these questions instead of who shit is this? There's a cat backstage dressed as a fucking goalie for Christ's sake. He's even got the little gloves. He's even got the little gloves. Anyway, that's why I arranged for you to see that broadcast from the last break. I didn't know it was going to be him. But I guess that just about sums it up. We are all up Ship Creek with a paddle made of Alan fucking James. Christ is also fucking pointless. I was going to quit tonight. Take a holiday. Try something else. Out on the limelight. Maybe try having a relationship. I hear they're nice. Never tried it. I... I loved them. And now, well... God, Jeremy, whoa, God. whoa, 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 whoa! I've tried my best to be honest with you, but this just isn't the news anymore. I'm not sorry. I've lost this Alex. fight. Alex, think of cut the consequences. I'll let you down. Please, we can't show this. Cut to the ads. My name's Jenny Thomas. Do it now. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Oh my god, like, we had to make our decisions all live too. And like, it's very... When you're in the room, and your boss is like, Okay, when you see the sensor stuff, just click on it, okay? You just click on it. But... I'm surprised. Well, the ratings were really good because, yeah. The, Don <gasps> the Donaldson situation has been resolved. All offensive words were censored. An interference-free show. Adequately edited. You played one advert too late. Advanced concerned about language. Valves excellently handled. Yeah, towards the end, I stopped censoring the anti-government stuff, but maybe it wasn't enough. No, 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 Advanced noticed. 
the Donaldson situation has been resolved. Should we have shown that? I don't know, because if we had shown it, I think feelings for this rut would rise. It would skyrocket. Mm. He was gonna do it, whether or not we showed it, though. I think, if we see in the behind the scenes here. See, both these tensions, they're both rising. Oh my god, suddenly it got really dark and heavy. I'm not sure if I want to see this. Maybe we should start with the adverts. Ooh, I don't even... Okay, we don't need to see this one. I don't even feel like seeing the funny ones, to be honest. I, I'm scared to watch the rushes. Our society has never been fairer. I can't let people die for my job. I love my family, but those people, they have families too. I don't have a card. We keep playing bullshit. Like literal shit. Like Jeremy says, to ignore the problem here. So, ah, advances thing is like two hands shaking hands, but disrupt is like a fist. But Alan James is not someone that is, he's a nut job. Both sides are, there's no ideal side here. They're both radicals on either side. Oh, Neil, I don't even want to... I know it's really hot, but... It sounded like Jeremy was planning on this, because he was expecting Jenny to not come in today, and Megan wasn't in here. Although... Yeah, there was a lot going on. Like, uh, Jeremy was talking at the back of every single broadcast. I'm sorry, Neil. I don't have... I don't have the... Not today. What's gonna happen next time to Jeremy? Oh... Oh my god. I'm just glancing through these. Oh, this is the, the flard. Oh no no no, it's a different thing. A game system? Remington's Vist is... Very pro advanced, they work together. Yeah, okay, okay, I. I... <sighs> advanced is concerned about the language, but if I keep playing the advanced stuff at the same time, I have to make a stand. Like, I can't. I want to keep my family fed, but it's basically at. Uh, at the... I have to give up my morals. I have to let people die. I have to pretend I don't see anything wrong with advance. Can I do that? If we were richer, then it might be easier to look away, but we're not doing great right now, so we do have a reason to go to disrupt. All these... Disrupt Revelation. And yes, I do have to say that earlier, when uh, Jeremy said, Look to your right, I accidentally looked to my left, because I can't tell between right and left. <laughs> Good evening. You know who we are. You've seen our symbols on your walls. You've heard them talk about us on the news. We are Disrupt. We are the resistance. It's time you knew the truth. You know advance are lying to you. You know the elderly are not a burden. You know the rich were not all evil. And you know the team membership card is an ID card. No matter what they try to tell you. But why should you trust us? Another faceless organization. A shadowy figure with a distorted voice. 
you've seen it so many times in the movies. Well, this is not a movie. Radical on one side, radical on the other. My name is Alan James. I used to try and shock people for a living, for entertainment. But now we live in a time where perhaps we need to be shocked. Perhaps we need to wake up. The bands are coming for our freedoms. They're coming for the fruits of our labors. They will take our wealth. They will euthanize our parents and smile them throughout. They will turn our children against us if we voice our concerns. But we don't have to accept it. A great many people already won't. We can resist. You can disrupt. Find us. Talk with us. Join us. It isn't hard. We're everywhere. You know, as much as this is a video game, I think there are definitely like lots of ideas worth actually thinking about here because what we're seeing here, this version of this world, is definitely based off our real world too. Oh god. I'm sweating like Peter Clement in an off-rising here. Okay, we're working on it. What, you've got someone to hose down the sun, have you? Yes, they've just strapped on their wax wings. Classical illusions are no substitute for air conditioning. You know, I genuinely thought you'd be in a better mood today. She's not even here. Megan? Yes, he is. Our gun-toting handler. Who, Andy? I don't know what the fuck his name is, do I? He's here to keep us safe from people like Disrupt. More like keep us in line. I hate guns. Give me the willies. Can't really classify people very neatly into being like, okay, this person is an advanced person. Okay, this person is a disrupt person, especially if you know them personally. Ten seconds, everybody. So, we've got any actual real news tonight? Well, the world's on fire. <laughs> that good enough for you? Going in five, four, three. <sighs> All this, and I'll be talking to some people with fascinating medical... <laughs> I couldn't even really like laugh at the whole like, you know, the farting people and the, the hiccuping. I think the hiccuping thing is real though. I'm pretty sure I've read about people actually having that condition. It's horrible. One time, recently, I, I don't know why there was one day, I read that hiccuping is related to gastrointestinal issues. And I think that day maybe I was having an upset stomach and then when I laid down in bed, like the moment I walked in my bedroom, I started hiccuping for like 20 minutes while I was trying to go to sleep. So it's, it's horrible. That's all up on tonight's Can't imagine National even for news. two hours or something. And after that, I'll be asking my own thumb what it thinks about the global financial situation, as well as what three members of the general public think about how a nuclear reactor might work. Could you be a little more dismissive in your delivery? I think there's a viewer out there somewhere who missed it. Viewers? We still have some of those, do we? Perhaps they're hoping to run into a fact. Jeremy, get mm. it together. Don't give Bozeman any more ammunition. Yes, yes. Because she would just wants to, you know, get by and not... Because if we piss off advance, there's a very real chance that they'll off us. There is a very real chance. Coming back from the titles, quiet in the studio. It's about caring about your friends and all that too. But first tonight, our team of correspondents has been dispatched to... Uh, we'll go back a little bit, see what they were talking about. Megan is totally on board, though, so I don't think she's feeling bad at all. You sure you don't want to drink? Oh, uh, no, thank you. Sure? No, I'd, I'd really best not. Flips on the beach? Um, you're really not my type. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the, the drink, the drink. Uh, go, go on, then. <laughs> but just the one. I am supposed to be working. <laughs> First, let's go to Megan Wolf in Shining on Sea to see what this scientific ass background has to say. Megan, how's the weather there? Uh, it's up. And then Jeremy's mad again. It's absolutely glorious, Jeremy. Thank you for asking. Are you fucking kidding me? She's on a beach? With a fucking cocktail? With what looks suspiciously like actual news? Would you rather she was here with you? Because that's been going so well recently. No, no, I don't want that either. Yeah, what? this is some scientific thing, right? What so that's like is... the well, closest thing to actual news. Never mind. Right now, I'd happily settle for a desk fan. Bozeman will never approve it. Why? Do you know they have dinner together? Who? Bozeman and Megan. And Bozeman's wife. Who is lovely, apparently. Who would have thought it? Bozeman managed to persuade some poor, hapless victim to shackle themselves to his ego. Your mic's still alive. And I have met Bozeman's wife, and she is lovely, actually. What do you mean you've met Bozeman's wife? How come you've met her? I don't even know she exists. Because in the eight years I've worked with you, I've never seen you attend a single workplace social event. I hate them. They're agonizing. Yes. Imagine the horror of spending an evening with your colleagues. I'd rather spend an evening with that fucking rapper. <laughs> 
When you used to be fun. Yes, it was about the last time we did the actual news, wasn't it? Before your lot turned into this shit. Look, he's very angry, but it comes from a place of passion. Because he really does care about the truth and not, not being a mouthpiece for the government. I'm sorry. My lot. Well, it's not my fault, is it? Why are you even here today? I mean, it's supposed to be your day off. I am not talking to you. <laughs> they can only report the news if it's all, like, fascinating. At the beach and stuff. Dude, does that even work? He's sweating like a pig. It, Jeremy, <laughs> proof, if proof be need be, that I've everything has actually just been fine. writing about the moment we'd finally meet Robin. <laughs> it's in iambic pentameter. Oh. And they get to be in like a nice office. Yeah. And Let's over to Robin Short, who's in Scratchford with some of the winners of this <laughs> week's team membership lottery. Robin, thanks, Jeremy. I'm in Scratchford with Gaffer. More bull crap about the team memberships. Safe. Has anyone seen Jenny? There's Jenny. more going on here too. Jenny. Megan is chilling out. Can I get a Did you hear that? She was like going on vacation and working on her serve. Her tennis serving or Yeah, tennis. Thick. You know, for smart. Why are you doing this? Some actual news. Well, off you go then. Shoo, shoo. Why are you doing this? You know, for a smart person, you're already thick. People want their flards more than they want their planet. Is it true Sophia Remington pays for your tennis lessons? If you excuse me, I have to go and work on my serve. The answer is yes. And she was talking about global warming and how we don't have time and no one cares. Because that's actual news. I know you can hear me. Don't you walk away from me. Jenny! Why do we not have air conditioning? He's in a blazer too, my god. And a tie and all that bullcrap. I mean, I feel for him. He He's the most popular anchor in the country. No, 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 not, no, not that. Look, I know it's not your job, but can I get a refill, please? Look, I... Oh. I know it's not your job, and I don't want to come over entitled like a certain co-host of mine, but my throat is dry, and I have to be sit here, sat here until the inevitable clusterfuck of an interview that is this, Gary the Shit Collector, comes to an end. <laughs> so, if you wouldn't mind, please. Well, go on then. Thank you. He's been, always been cynical, but like in a lovable way, and I, I feel his sorrow. I feel it. Because Megan is... Going up and up and it, I don't know, it feels like a betrayal of everything. Yeah, she was the one that was a devil in my dream too, but... Oh dear. It's hot, it's hot! There's no news. Back to you, Jeremy! Thanks, Robin! What a lucky... I mean, it really has. I mean, does he change his tie? No. Does he wash his hair? Doesn't do anything. But he's not also stuck here in this hellhole of place, sweating his arms. Is he his the arms. weather? I mean, really is affecting horrible. the locals. Like, Patrick? Okay, he was just talking him. Yeah, that's true. At least Jeremy's not on site. <laughs> it must be harder here. Hello there, Jeremy! Hello, yes. I'm here live in Grizzleford, which has recently voted the... <laughs> oh my god, he's still talking about the shit here. This one's called a stu- you, Jeremy! Thanks, Robin. What a lucky pair they are. That was disgusting! Go! Just get out of here, go! Sorry, I might have got a bit carried away, alright. No, no, not you. You, yes! What? You! Get out of my face! What? Jesus. This one's called a study in corn. Yeah! Bastard. Oh my god, have you finally found someone in a worse situation than you? 
I'm picking up that she might be somewhat annoyed with me. For your information, Jeremy, me and my lot aren't the reason there's no real news left. I put plenty of ideas forward, but they always get squashed up the chain. Fucking Bozeman. No, not Bozeman. Further up. Ooh, Advance. Ooh. I shouldn't have even said that. <coughs> well, 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 Patrick, who's not looking presentable now, eh? Fucking Elsa. <laughs> Just send more Mr. Snuggle hugs over his way. Again! It's okay. He looks okay. <laughs> Does that make him waterproof? What's happening to him out there? He's getting very delusional. He's just called the guest a stinking old tramp. Are we really gonna let this continue? Yeah, he started swearing earlier. I was surprised. The hosts usually don't swear. Oh, Patrick, why? Cut away to you. You're not any more presentable, unfortunately. We don't have news, we just have bull crap here on all day long. What was stupid? Unless, of course, you've got something better to do. Yeah, he's getting, we'll he's taking it out on everybody. After these messages. Well, that was stupid, even for you. I don't care. It's done. I am done. It's 200 fucking degrees in here, and I can't do this anymore. You say this every Friday. I've done something. What do you mean? Jeremy? My mic is still alive. Hmm, he was planning this. Oh, God. That's what I'm talking about? Cat football? We should be doing an interview with the war minister or a report from... Yeah, Grand we're going Sam. to war. Even the weather be more fucking relevant than this. Jeremy, please, just breathe. It's just something like to keep people... Kind of thing. Exactly. Which is wrong. People are into the moment. Other things. Christ, it's so fucking hot. Please take a picture of the time. I can't be the same as I can. I don't know. That's it. I actually... I'm not sure how... How did he grab the security guy's gun? Like, it just sort of happened when they were taking out this guy who had to say everything he was thinking. It was some sort of a compulsion. It's a pumpkin! A ginger tabby with a world-class pair of penalty paws. Is that really necessary? No, it isn't. Let go! <laughs> Not you! Unhand him at once! It's you. Oh, enough! That's enough! Whoa, 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 what? Did the security guy hit the woman? Yeah, he did. Oh, I'm off. Oh, what are Whoa. you doing? And then and then Jeremy grabbed the gun somehow. Like that. I'm off. Oh, what are you doing? I'm trying not to piss myself. Alex, cut to the Don't you dare! Don't you fucking dare cut to the ads before I tell you to. Now, you in the broadcast center. Siege. 
Because they don't want you to know what's Can happening, so they just give you some random crap and disguise it as news. Well, how did that tape even get on my right side? Oh no. How long? Yeah, this is fine. This is just the beginning. Do I even want to see this? The last minute? There was about a minute that I didn't play because I cut to ads early. See, today, I got an overall grade of A, and I still only got my full wages. I didn't even get a bonus. Because I know because I messed up a lot on purpose, but... I can't climb out of poverty. And I... Advance is not helping me. I don't really have a reason to help Advance. Sorry. But I guess I don't... I've tried my best to be honest with you, but this just isn't the news anymore. I don't Cut to the ads. I've lost this Alex. fight. Cut to the ads. I've let you down. Please, we can't show this. Cut to the ads. My name's Jane Donaldson. Do it now. If you can, somehow. And I envy you if you can. Have a peaceful night. Jeremy! Oh. Uh, one last thing I wanted to check. Well, in, less than a minute, in the we'll very be beginning right here, we get to choose, like, that's not that, in the Russias. I want to see what Julia Salisbury lineup. said about the war. At 6.30, Megan Wolf is at the beach, chatting with members of the general Shut public up. for a special heat. Emerson, military blockade to enforce military the blockade. unjust and punitive sanctions now entering their 10th week. In a statement from team headquarters a short time ago, Prime Minister Julia Salisbury As soon as people move in, we're gonna start attacking them? Are we even good enough? Oh my god, things are really... I can't even... It's not about my family anymore, it's about the nation at large. What am I gonna do next? I don't... I don't have a clear plan. I think I'm just gonna wing it and see whatever I feel like in the moment. Advance are definitely not the answer here, but is Disrupt... Is Disrupt the right answer? I kinda wanna raise both of them... Okay, I wanna raise Disrupt a little bit more, so they can fight against Advance, but Advance... Like, if Disrupt is in power, then I feel like bad things are probably gonna start happening too, but we'll... We'll see you next time! But now you start to see it, eh? sir. The people never happy. It never enough. I cannot believe you do that.